Hello everyone and welcome to this video with my thoughts on the 24 hour of Daytona controversy from this past weekend in iRacing. Now if you've been living under a rock these last few days since the event, I'll quickly summarize. There is a, a lot of hoopla going on about how one of the winning GTP drivers from the Williams Esports team gained an unfair advantage by doing this quality lap in the apron below the yellow line in Daytona. This of course is illegal according to the iRacing sporting code, however it is not punishable in real time because the event wasn't live stewarded, nor was it counted as an off track to cancel the lap. And, and that was explained for the reasoning behind that from Greg West from iRacing when he kind of responded to this incident in a post after the fact. So the debate rages on between those that think it's fair play that the game doesn't directly punish the actions in the sim game, regardless if it's within the sporting code, which I'll note we have all agreed to to race in officials. But by this logic of just pushing the bounds of what the game allows, you could just directly crash out an opponent with no more than a 2x or a 4x if you're careful enough, with no worry of DQing in a live non steward event, right? I think it's generally accepted that no, it's not okay. The majority of the community follows this without having to be directly enforced by the game itself, which in my mind is not different from the infractions committed on that quality lap. No, I don't fully agree with the outcry from what I'm seeing on social media either, that iRacing needs to do something and it's only iRacing that can do something. For me, this goes beyond just the service used for this big esports event, and it is on these so-called professional teams and drivers to be accountable and held accountable. Okay, so that was just part of it. Then today making the rounds is this video here by Pablo GZ, link in the description, where he finds additional unsportsmanlike behavior from Team Williams Esports drivers, this time in the GTD class. Now my jaw dropped a bit when he showed how drivers from the Williams Esports Ben Q team, who had gone multiple laps down from an earlier incident, started purposely pitting and waiting two plus minutes at the pit exit to rejoin in an effort to slow competitors ahead of the Williams Esports team, who were still on the lead lap. A few times they did it to help provide a slipstream to teammates, which to be honest, I don't have a huge problem with, although a bit sketchy. However, when they started deliberately not adhering to blue flag warnings and doing maneuvers like that uh, for multiple laps, taking to defensive lines, intentionally blocking as we just saw there, and wrecking out lead lap cars, see in a second, we have a major problem with unsportsmanlike behavior that is absolutely inexcusable from an everyday iRacer, let alone a professional team and drivers. Is this also just a, if the game allows it, we take it justifiable action? As Williams Esports team manager Seb Hawkins proclaimed in a now deleted tweet referring to the quality incident. Unfortunately, this type of stuff cannot be policed with programming. So I think it goes without saying that the easy answer is for iRacing to live steward the top splits in these large popular events. However, beyond iRacing issuing useless one week bans, for drivers who probably don't even race officials anyway, or actually DQing the teams, which I have a feeling that might be technically incapable of doing on the back end. Uh, just a gut feeling, if they are expressing it for them doing it, please let me know. It's really up to the sim racing community to hold this unsportsmanlike conduct accountable. But how, you ask? Well, it starts with folks like Pablo GZ here and Nicholas Romero, the original tweet I saw on the quality incident, making these infractions public with video proof. Next, doing the old school tired and true method of writing complaints to the team sponsors. And finally, I think a major deterrent would be to blacklist these drivers and teams from participating in future events, regardless if it's iRacing related. Of course, this could only work if the community holds these event holders accountable. So it's up to you guys. As Pablo GZ hinted in the video, it wasn't necessarily only Williams Esports team either, but unfortunately for them, they got the spotlight on this one. Ultimately, if the drivers and teams are properly held accountable, it would be enough, I think, to change the culture a bit and show unsportsmanlike behavior doesn't pay. In one final note, I just want to say I'm disappointed in the management over at Williams Esports. Some of these drivers are still teenagers and is the main reason I'm not calling them out here. They should be guided by mentors who know better, promote healthy and fair sportsmanship. Now, I do wonder if Seb Hawkins ever watched The Karate Kid and misunderstood that John Kreese and Cobra Kai are actually the bad guys in the movie. Sweep the leg. You have a problem with that? No sensei. No mercy. Anyways, I'll put the links below to the sponsors of the Williams Esports team if you're so inclined. And thanks for listening to my TED Talk. And until next time, safe driving.